So there's a misconception that if you're single, you are incomplete, perhaps damaged, salvaged, and you won't be happy until you find your one. And that is not true. That is bullshit. It is a message that has been fed to us by media and advertising. The truth is, when you're single, you have the richest soil for growth. That's why I created this podcast. And unlike other podcasts, this one is host-driven, not guest-driven. That means I will be rotating health and wellness experts three times a week to give you the giant box of wellness crayons, not just the primary colors, so you can start building a meaningful life. It's time to give singlehood a cape. So the host of today's episode I met through Vanessa, my partner. And uh, she's disclosed this on her podcast and social media, so I will as well. These were the catalysts in her life early years. So Ashley was her therapist, and she also did sessions with Ashley's husband, Lair. So I thought it was interesting to bring them on as host slash contributors because uh, she they were just such a powerful part of Vanessa's story. And... I know they will be for you, for you as well. Okay, Laird Torrent is the author of the book, The Practice of Love, Break Old Patterns, Rebuild Trust, and Create a Connection That Last. He is a leading marriage family therapist and a mindfulness-based relationship therapist. A daily OM bestselling author and a contributing columnist at Inc.com. He has been resourced and interviewed by such notable news outlets and publications as NPR, Rolling Stone, The New York Times, and a host of podcasts and radio shows. He is the co-host of the Not Your Mama's Therapy podcast and can be found on Instagram at Lair Torrent, T-O-R-R-E-N-T, Holistic Therapist. And his wife, Ashley Torrent, is a psycho-spiritual therapist, intuitive medium, and spiritual teacher. She sees both individual and couples, offers intuitive readings, teaches classes in spiritual mediumship, and is a co-host of the Butterfly Effect podcast. I'm sorry, the Blue Butterfly Effect podcast, which aims to ground spirituality and explore personal transformation. Ashley believes that as spiritual beings, we are all mediums, channels, and energy healers, but have forgotten our true nature and how to use these innate gifts. She also believes Based on her personal experience as a complex trauma survivor and practitioner, practitioner, that true healing occurs when we, we weave together psychological understanding and spiritual practice. She can be found on Instagram at Ashley Torrent, T-O-R-R-E-N-T 29. I hope you enjoyed this episode with Lair and Ashley. Hey, everybody. This is Lair Torrent and Ashley Torrent. We are... The Praxis of Love podcast. We're taking over John Kim's Single on Purpose podcast again, as we often do. And whenever I'm introducing us, whether we're doing our show or this one, I will say, hi, everybody. My name is Lair Torn. I'm a licensed marriage and family therapist. I'm the author of the book, The Praxis of Love. I'm with, with me, as always, is my lovely wife, Ashley Torrent. She is a psychospiritual counselor, or I'll say a therapist, and an intuitive medium. And then we just kind of go on with the show. And I never actually, we never actually talk about the fact that you're a medium, that you talk to dead people. That's probably, people are like, wow, wait, 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 wait hold on a second. I mean, maybe they don't, but I, I would imagine it leaves more questions than answers. Like, what does she do? She's a therapist, but she's a medium. She talks to dead people. A lot of us have ideas of what it is to be a medium, right? Like walking into a place with a neon hand on the uh, uh, front of the building in a, in a crystal ball in the middle of the table. That's not really what you do, um, but you are an intuitive medium. And so today I thought we'd unpack that a little bit. We talk about what it is that you do, because I think what you do is really fucking interesting, really interesting, because you're not only this amazing therapist who's helped literally thousands of people, but you suddenly banged a left at Albuquerque a couple of years ago and said to me, like, quite literally, I talk to dead people now. And that's kind of how I explain <laughs> it to people. And people laugh, but it's kind of true. That's what happened. You're like, one day you're like, yeah, I think I talk to dead people and you do. And so you turn this into an aspect of your business and an aspect of how you practice both with your client base as, as therapist, but also as just a straight up medium reading for people whose relatives have passed, or as I understand it, 
if they're looking for a soul reading. Yeah. And so I wanted to talk about that today. I want to talk about what it is for you in particular to be, because I think every medium is probably a thumbprint, right? They have their own unique thing that they do. You have your own unique thing that you do. I think it's really friggin' interesting. So let's talk about it today. What is it? What is mediumship to you? And what do you do as a medium? I know it's a broad question, but let's have it. I got it. Um, and I'm glad pitch. we're talking about it. What'd you say? Give me your elevator pitch. <laughs> um, I'm glad we're talking to about it because I think it does lead to a lot of questions and some people think it's really cool or some people think it's just a cheap party trick. And some people I think, think it's, it's so much. Scary. Yeah. And some people, some think, people think it is straight, straight, up, straight scary. up scary. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And for me, it's just, it's an incredible way of understanding um, what happens when we die because mediumship is really evidence of an afterlife. That's what mm -hmm. it is. When I give a reading, I, heard you say that. I am yeah proving to the person I'm reading, um, they're called a sitter. So someone that comes to me for a mediumistic reading, I'm showing them that their loved ones who have passed are still with them and that they're sending them messages. And I can talk about who they are, um, where they've been, what their life was like. Um, they often come through and make apologies for ways they've treated the person I'm reading for. They come through and show me memories of things they did together or things that have happened to the person I'm reading since they passed. I actually had a grandmother come through and talk. I'm sorry. Well, I'll just say I had a grandmother come through and say, oh, okay. A grandmother came through and said um, she loved watching her grandson play soccer, but the grandson didn't play soccer when she was alive. So the person I was reading for was like, oh my God. Um, so how these messages come through, um, it's intuitive language. So when I'm reading for someone, the intuition, intuitive language comes to me and it's my own unique form. We each have our own unique intuitive language, but they call it different clairs. You can call, you may have heard the word clairvoyance, which means you can see things that have happened, see the future, the past. Um, intuition can come in the form of images or pictures. If you imagine, um, it comes to you the way your imagination comes to you in that mind's eye. Um, I don't see it with my eyes the way I see you right now. I see it in the place where my imagination is. So intuition comes to me, those pictures. So if someone's coming through the other side, they may show me what color hair they had, where they lived, a picture of um, their favorite shoes, or, you know, it could be anything. Um, so they images. also yeah, come to not, me. You're not seeing entities. You're not seeing people standing next to them or behind them necessarily, although I think you have in the past. Um, but you're, when you're getting, yeah, you're I've getting seen, go ahead. Well, I know I don't see them the way I see like you right now. Um, I know there are some mediums. I've heard it's rare, but I know there, there are some mediums that see them as if they're standing in the room, but I see it more in my mind's eye. So this intuition comes to me through those images. It comes to me through words or voices that I hear. It comes to me. I can sometimes smell them, smell their favorite food of those who have passed. I can sometimes taste their favorite food as information. And it's very physical. It's the, what's called clairsentience. Um, I can feel them in my body. Sometimes they'll show me how they passed and I can feel that it was of a heart attack or a woman came through recently and I could feel that she died of COVID. So really my job is interpreting what they're sending me. As my friend Caroline said, it's like psychic charades. So they're wow. sending me all these messages, all this information, and it's coming into my body and I need to decipher what it means. Now, it. sometimes they show me what it literally means. Um, and sometimes it's my job to interpret what it means so I can really get the message through. So it's a dance between literal images and pictures and um, feelings and understanding what sometimes the, that language means to me and represents for me. And I think that's where we all have our own intuitive vocabulary, because what if I see a tree, what a tree means to me may mean something different to someone else. What um hopefulness or grace or love feels like in my body may feel different in someone else's body. So I need to know what those things feel to me in order to deliver the message. And so you work with the sitter to get some sense of, to, to kind of work it out. And so right, like I may see, like an, yeah, it may not feel like an exact fit when you say this, you know, apple tree or something or whatever. Like, I don't know, we don't have any apple trees. I don't know what that means. And then as you work with it, they perhaps will have a memory or something will come out. Oh, because I'm when I've the way I've understood it is that the the person or the the spirit on the other side 
is using language or using impression through you to, to show evidence to the, to the sitter um, that this person or this, this spirit is here. Now I, I had personal experience with that when you have had both my uncle who I had no idea had already died uh, come through and my mm -hmm. grandmother, my grandmother I knew had died, but you use language that you would have never used in the 20 years that I had known you. I had never talked to you about the fact that we used to say that my grandmother, my grandmother laughed all the time, but we would say she cackled. She's cackling again. And we, that was just mm -hmm. sort of a familyism that we had around grandma. And you were sitting there in the car with me. So I think your grandmother's here. And I was like, what really? What? All of a sudden out of nowhere, why is, why is Phyllis visiting now? And, he, and she's like, you said, yeah, I don't know. She keeps telling me that she's cackling. And I was like, wait, I hadn't heard that term in right. a couple of decades. I never and used that just, term. You just used it, right? And then, and then my uncle, who I didn't even know was dead, and I think he was coming to tell me that he was dead, mm -hmm. you turned to me and you said, who's Mr. Green Jeans? There's a guy here. There's a man here telling me to tell you Mr. Green Jeans. And, mm -hmm. and I was like, shit, I haven't thought about Mr. Green Jeans since I was five. And mm -hmm. my uncle Sullivan used to come over every morning and have a coffee with my mom. And he would sit and watch Captain Kangaroo with me. And he always laughed because m my favorite character was Mr. Green Jeans. And he would watch the show with me and he would call me Mr. Green Jeans sometimes. And so that was a, a way of him telling me that I'm here. And you had, there was no reason you should have known. Cat, no, I Mr. didn't even know what Mr. Green Jeans was. I mean, I may have heard a reference so, when I was a kid, but I didn't watch Captain Kangaroo. <laughs> so no, that's I what I mean. Um, yeah. And I find, so, you know, I do two different types of reading readings. And um, when I do medium mystic readings, when someone from the other side is coming through, the language is pretty literal. They'll, I mean, they're pretty specific about what's happening to them. Like I said, if they're coming to show me how they passed or I might have to interpret that because I'm having feelings in my body that, you know, I have never had a heart attack. So I have to kind of figure out what that means. But I also do readings, soul to soul readings. And what that means is I'm connecting my soul to someone who is still alive. Now, when I do a reading with someone who has passed, I'm connecting my soul to those souls that have passed because mm. we, we may shed our human body, but we continue energetically. So our souls continue. And um, that's the beauty of mediumship because it shows this idea of spirituality and what happens in the afterlife that, you know, it answers some questions that um, many people have or things that we don't understand. Well, so a mediumistic me reading. I'm sorry. I, I didn't mean to interrupt. Is that, is that delay again? But I, I did want to know before I lose the thread. So there's the straight up mediumistic reading and then there's a soul to soul reading. Now, why would someone come for a soul to soul? I can, under, I, I can surmise, but I don't want to hear you talk about like, what do, what, what does someone get when they have a soul to soul reading? Well, you know, we're always having two types of conversations, whether we know it or not, we're having a human conversation and a soul conversation. When someone comes to me for a soul reading, they're often looking for guidance or support in their life. Now I'll say, I, I don't do like fortune telling readings. I try not to do that because I believe we have free will. So if someone comes to me and says, who am I going to marry? And, and all these things, they want to know what their life's going to look like. I really try to avoid that because I never want to give someone information that might push them towards that direction. Cause I think it's important. We choose that direction. Um, so usually when I do, you know what I mean? Yeah. So what I try to do is, what the soul will often show me first something. One of my favorite things is when I connect soul to soul, I see a reflection of that person's essence. And that is such a beautiful thing because if, let me just start here. When we're connecting in any of this space, we're connecting through love. So think about it this way. Humans are on FM all the time in our minds, our egos, our fear, doing, doing whatever we're doing. The other side, the soul spirit energy is all on AM to me. And that's the frequency okay. of love. So you hear a lot of times we have to be raise our vibration or change our frequency. Well, what it means mm -hmm. is we have to step into the energy of love. So when I connect soul to soul to someone, I ask my ego, my fear, my doubt mind to step aside and I step into the space of my heart and I basically connecting heart to heart to somebody, but the heart is the voice of the soul. So mm -hmm. I'm connecting from that space. I'm imagining an energetic bridge building between us. And the other thing to remember is that 
I don't often see people in person. I do it online. So this is also proof that energy transcends space or time. But when I connect soul to soul, the soul shows me an essence. It shows me a picture of that person, who they are at the core of their being. And it's often these incredible pictures that I could never imagine for myself. Like I've seen beautiful jewels. I've seen um, sunsets. I've seen um, colors. Sometimes I've seen people who are artists that don't even know they're artists and their soul shows me a creative palette and images that um, are beyond anything I've ever seen in my, with my human eyes. So I love to offer that reflection to people and you can see them light up because they're get they're having, it's like their soul holds up a mirror and says, this right. is who you really are. And they say they, they probably you know it on some level, right? Like that, that, that feels congruent. I'm going to imagine at some level. Well, that's the interesting thing is that I think the human knows a lot more than we give ourselves credit for, but because we spend a lot of time, we get afraid or we're in this practical world or things have happened to us that we've forgotten our essence um, or we get so busy doing other things, but underneath all of that, I think mm -hmm. we know a lot a bit more about what we're capable of and who we are than we give ourselves credit for. We're just not listening. So right. often when I hold up that reflection, the person is like, they get it. And also it brings tears to their eyes and it brings tears to my eyes often. Um, and usually then the soul will say, will show me through that intuitive language, something they're moving towards, something that they're working on in their life that they need support or guidance on. And then it gives mm -hmm. me messages about how to help them do that. Um, and the soul is so friggin' accurate. It's unbelievable. Mm -hmm. It's, it's unbelievable how like I can say, this is what I'm seeing. And a person will be like, yeah. I'm working through that right now, or I understand what you're saying. So that was my next question, because I was going to ask, like, does does that soul then tell you is that soul connection tell you like this is the, this is the karmic piece that you're working on? This is the these are the struggles that you're probably having right now. And and, and these are why you're having the, this is why you're having these struggles. Yeah, I mean, it, it, why it just it's this is what they're supposed to heal in this life, you know, and I, I think what I've come to understand not I think what I've come to understand is that this human life supports the evolution of the soul. That mm. things that we experience, encounter, people we know, things that we choose are all here to support the healing or evolution of that soul. So we, when we're in a deep process or we're suffering or we're trying to figure out what's going on in our life, that's usually a, a pivotal point for that person to figure out which way to go. It's a, it's a healing point. It shows that shows me what that person is capable of, the possibility that lies on the other side of the of this experience for them. And what I've learned is suffering is a call to healing. Suffering wakes us up. And so the soul shows me you're having this experience because you're supposed to know that you're worth more than this relationship or this job is not meant for you, that you're actually an artist in your heart. And um, when I'm in the space with people, it's so loving, but you can feel the moment the ego comes into the space, like the sitter's ego, right. because often they'll be like, oh, that's all great, but I want to know, is this guy for me or is this girl for me or mm -hmm. am I going to get a raise? And the human wants these like very linear, practical answers, you know, right. which I get. I totally get. Mm -hmm. But the soul is like, there's a bigger picture here. Right. It's not about, you know necessarily that person or that job or the money or the raise. It's about your evolution and your healing. And are you reaching the highest potential that you can in this life? You know, it's the difference between um, fate and destiny. Are you fated to stay in a job that you're unhappy with? Are you destined for so much more? Hmm. That's really interesting. Um, but I also want to make sure we touch on the fact, because this is the part that I've always found particularly interesting about what it is that you do for two reasons. One, as a therapist, you're holding that energetic space um, as we do as a therapist, but you, 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 you take the, the, the empathy um, button to a next level. I'm going to imagine with this, as you sit and empathically uh, kind of bring your inner medium to the table with your therapy clients. But at the same time, I've got to imagine that as you sit with a sitter who is just there for a straight up mediumistic reading, that it's different because look, I, I've had, I've kind of always taken issue with mediums who read you and these people, some 
awesome and amazing, some terrible and toxic. Um, these people who may have tortured you in your in life or who you're just grieving their loss. And the, the message that the, that the, that the medium is able to give you is, and they say, go and lighten love and go and lighten love and just go and lighten love. And I've always like, I've always thought that's, that's not sufficient, a sufficient enough hold for someone who's come here and this, this, this experience they're having needs a more um, connective holding space, I think. And so you as a therapist, bringing that as your secondary, that's got to be a pretty amazing place for you to be, to hold both. Yeah. I mean, I feel that um, being a therapist helps me go a little, go deeper in a reading. It helps me use language that can facilitate a healing process because I think a reading, no matter where on the spectrum it lies from just a reflection of your essence and this is what's meant for you to these people came through and they're apologizing to you're not you're in an, a relationship that's causing you pain it might be time to get out whatever that is i feel like i'm able to deliver it with language that starts the healing process and begins the integration of this information you know because i i do yeah. have i've had teachers that um aren't coaches or therapists and, and don't really have other healing modalities and they have to refer the person out. They're like, this is the message. And then you should take this to someone and process right. it with them. Yeah, and I love, happen. yeah, that part of the job I can do is help people start processing. You know, we can talk about like inner child work that needs to happen. And so I feel like I get to go deeper than maybe some people get to go um, mm -hmm. with the message. And I don't agree with just your grandmother's here, go with light and love, because I'm like, if they're coming through, they want to yeah. say a lot more than that. Well, and that's not enough for us as a feelings. human. I'm sorry. Yeah, and that's not enough. I want to know why they come through. Do they remember that thing that happened? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. So I, I kind of want to switch tracks a little bit if it's okay. Um, because I want to talk about the fact that you teach this stuff, which to mm -hmm. me is like this feels like one of those things you you can, you know, you can either play or, or not, but you say no, in fact, we all have this ability. And and in truth, I I, I, I feel it as well. Like I, I feel oh, like you definitely have it. You've always said that. Um, and so I, I do want to talk about the, the fact that you teach this. And so can you tell me, um, what do you teach people? How do you, how do you teach them? Oh, well, it's one of my favorite things to teach. I get so excited about it because I have learned in my time doing this, that whether I've been working with clients or doing readings, that everyone's intuitive, that everyone's psychic. And there are mediums that won't agree with me when I say this, because there's a, there's a phrase out there that says everyone is psychic, but only mediums see the other side. Not all psychics see medium, not all psychics see the other side. So basically, sorry, I butchered that. All mediums are psychic, but not all psychics are mediums is what I'm saying. Is you that really confusing? Want to go to a, a, some sort of saying that was, you're going to go to a, a colloquialism for you. That was your. I can't. I'll butcher it every time. Everybody should know this woman is famous for butchering quotes and like old adages. Forget it. This is a woman who said to me one time, "Man, I sure would like to be the bump on the wall in that room." Bump on the wall, in that room. <laughs> yeah. And then the time you said you wouldn't, you like to be a fly. You felt like a fly in a log when you were sick that time. You told me that you were you were on the lamb. Yes. Yes. I butcher them so every you time. So you steer clear of all of those. And whenever you're being interviewed, I should talking, steer clear. Okay. Can you I know. Start I over should really stop. Medium? Okay. I'll start over. So <laughs> I believe, I believe everyone can do this, but there is a belief out there that only mediums can see the other side and are psychic. They often say that psychics can't see the other side. Now, in my experience, like I said, everyone I've encountered or taught has been able to see the other side. Now, does it come easier to others? Like maybe music, playing music comes easier to some people or creating art. But what I've seen is that it's really, if you can tune into your heart and be in that feeling space, that emotional space, that intuitive language space, those people have the easiest time learning. I have taught people that struggle with that, that are very left-brained, um, very practical. Um, I can be very left brained at times. Yep. Um, it's also easier to read someone who can get into their feelings. The energy flows so much easier, but I love teaching this because 
not everyone who comes to my class wants to be a medium and I don't expect them to. I think you know there have been several that were working on developing their mediumship and they're creating a business and that's great. I love teaching those, mm -hmm. but I also love teaching the person that's just curious. And what you'll find is a lot of my students are people who are very empathic and very sensitive. Um, now, I think we are all these qualities, but I think depending on what, how we grew up or what's happened to us in our life, like we have developed those. I like, I used to think that empathy was a superpower for people that are born out of trauma. Right. And I think those people who are empaths and know it usually did have some sort of trauma growing up. They grew up in an environment where they had to be really turned on to know what was happening in their house. But in sure. truth, because we are sure. spiritual beings having a human experience, we all are empaths. We're all channels. We're all mediums. And I just, I guess through my students, I've seen that. So the other thing I, reason I like to teach is because I love helping people understand the, where their intuition speaks to them. And one of the ways I teach is I pair people up and they do soul to soul readings. And the first time someone does a soul to soul reading, you know, they get the language, they give evidence and without a shadow of a doubt within that first class, they're like, oh my God, I'm psychic and intuitive. And they begin in that first class to see that they have this ability. And then after the class, they can take it into their own life and they can start to hear when their soul is talking to them, when the universe is talking I to gotta, them. I gotta imagine Sorry, I can see you have a question. A, yeah, I do. I, I, I got to imagine. I just want to make a point that like that, that gives you another tool set to, to uh, another skill set, another set of tools to, to uh, meet your life with, right? Like it's not just you you're thinking with your big brain all the time that like you can actually feel into a situation. You can actually get uh, a gut message on, should I do this? What path I should take? Should I not do that? And if you can develop that intuitive language with someone like yourself, I mean, that's got to be an invaluable um thing to be able to bring into your life. I, I mean, I, I would feel like it's sort of like a, a a leg up on life if you can actually learn to do this. And so it, what you're telling me is, I think I already knew this, that your students aren't necessarily just people who want to become mediums. Your students are also people who just want to learn how to be more intuitive in their lives. Yeah, they want to know more about spirituality and understand what they believe. They want to be able to tune into their soul and hear what their soul has to say. I mean, the thing I've learned for me personally is when I'm listening to my intuition, it tells me which way to go. It tells me this, this is the next step. This is how to do it. I mean, it's very clear and the intuition is a very, it's a, it's a peaceful language. It's a very um, sure language. It's not in the static of fear or hesitation. It's, it's like so certain and sure. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's helped me so much guide me through like different places in my life. It even led me to mediumship and knowing that this is what I wanted to do, to be a therapist, to have children, to you. Um, so many things in my life was because my intuition said, this is here for you if you choose it. And so when I teach people how to use this, not only do they learn how to work with their intuition, um, a lot of them really struggle with empathy. And struggle with how to have empathic boundaries with people and empathic boundaries with other people suffering in the world. And what practicing in this way in this class learns you to decipher what's your energy and what's the other person and how to tend to your energy when you're overloaded and how to not take on so many other people's stuff. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was just thinking about how... Um you know, the, the experiential from, I always used to think, well, someone would ask me, well, what's your gut on this? What do you, you know, what's your intuition? And I would say, I don't know. And really it was because I was thinking about it. And, you know, some of the stuff yeah. I learned from you, which was to drop into my body and to feel it and to get a sense of not thinking about it, but just sort of feel what the energy feels like. And that's been, you know, a guiding force in so many areas of my life. Um, whether it would be to, you know, what, what's the next project I'm working on? You know, like I remember we were standing on a beach in Maui and I just turned to you and said, I need to write a course for couples. And you're like, okay, let's do it. And we did it. And it was a really great choice. Um, but that wasn't a, this is yeah. so much a thought. It was like this guiding sense that was in my body. I'm like, I have to create this thing. I need to build this and I needed it. And I wanted to build it and I did it. Um, but then I started, I've really started using this with my clients 
And so when I'm sitting with a client and it feels like the work is tough, it's really hard. Like they don't know where they're going or what they, what it is that they need in my brain, my, my big mm -hmm. psychological brain with all the books and shit that I've read over the years, that's all sitting there and, and it's not really helping that much. And so what I'll do is I will, I will, I will drop my, my, my energy into my body and I'll ask sort of the universe. I'll say, what does this person need from me right now? What do they need to know? It's like a, it's like a water spout of information comes in immediately. And yeah. I'm suddenly saying things that I'm like, I'm not even sure where that came from. I hope it's right. Um, but it always is. Um, and it's often stuff that, you know, I know I would have never brought in had I been using my thinking brain. And so that's kind of what well, you're Well, that's people, exactly that right? it. Well, that's it. Because think about, again, that FM radio station I was talking about. So when we're in our, our thinking brain, our ego, maybe fear, whatever we're doing, it's very masculine energy. It's, it's like a to-do list. It's we want answers. So we go after those answers. We try to think about the answers. We try to come up with the answers. And there's a lot of trying, trying, trying. Intuition yep. is the complete opposite. It's, very it's a very feminine energy. Yeah, it's a feminine, it's a feminine energy that's all about receiving. And it's about trusting, trusting that something you put will it come. That way before. That's that's awesome. Yeah, I love it. It's I just imagine opening my energy up to receive. And so it's very mm -hmm. trusting. You have to trust that something's gonna come. And we're not very good as humans at trusting. You know, we think we can find the answer, but sitting and quiet and receiving the answer. But that's what we're doing. We're trusting, we're surrendering, we're opening up, um, being vulnerable enough, being in our heart space, being in our feeling space to believe that something will open up. And, um, and that's how we receive it. And so it comes in this flood of information. I work the same with clients as you is when I feel like I don't know where to take them. I just say like in my heart, show me where to take them. And then within seconds, something comes in. You know, it's, it's interesting because, you know, we've, we, we, uh, you and I, we've raised, we are currently raising a highly sensitive child. And um, prior mm -hmm. to Jake turning 12, 13, when, you know, his, his brain is developing more and he's, he has more sort of emotional connection to himself, he was difficult. And I know that in my better parenting moments, um, whether you're, whether you're raising a spirited child or a highly sensitive child or not parenting is rough and you often find yourself at a place of like, I don't know what to do in this moment. And if you have the, that ability, that skill of dropping into your body and saying, okay, what does this child need from me right now? Right. You're going to be led through your heart center. You're going to be led through your soul. I think you're going to be led through your, your, your intuition to give that kid probably something other than what your head and your ego is telling you to bring. Absolutely. And it's always love. The answer is always based in love when it's, you know, in when intuition, you may get other information, but it's from a loving place. It's not scary. It's not mm -hmm. harsh. It'll never take the fear-based choice, make a fear-based choice. Mm. It's always the softer, loving version. I think that should be a class of yours, the intuitive parent. Yeah, I want to do the look intuitive that, therapist, and then I should do the intuitive <laughs> parent. That's a great idea. I love it. I want to teach everyone because we need this skill. It's time yeah. enough already with just, you know, our minds are there for a purpose. Our egos serve a purpose. And I think our egos really show us where our healing could be. It's like the pain point we hit over and over again. And so our egos, like, it's like a neon Vegas sign saying, Hey, you need to heal this. Mm -hmm. um, so there's a purpose to all of that, but we take for granted this magic that we have of our heart and soul. We take for granted that at any moment, we have this wisdom and this loving space available to us at any moment, at any time, if we just drop in, if we choose to create it or choose to um, allow it to come into our field. Hmm. I love that. So when are you teaching again? When's the next class? When's the next go around? Um, oh, I have new classes starting March 6th. So yeah, I have um, two class options, Mondays or Thursdays. What'd you say? How long are, well, like how long does the class last and how long are the classes? Oh, um, it's a two, about a two hour class and it meets for six weeks and it's a very, um, experiential class. So I do a teaching piece and then we practice on each other's it's limited. Each class is limited to six people. So it's an intimate space and a very safe space. Um, and I'll have to say that 
honestly, everyone that's come into that space that I've had the privilege of teaching has been so compassionate and kind and the way yeah, people support and are present for each other. It's blown my mind. Like for how often do you get to sit in a space where someone witnesses you, um, holds a loving space for you and is compassionate for wherever you are in that space. And we don't really get that often. Um, so it's really beautiful to see these people um, create friendships, but also create this confidence. And then after people finish that class, they're invited to join um, a community that meets weekly on Tuesday nights with me. Oh, fun. I love listening to you talk about it because you love it so much. I do. I love it so much. I think you were going to ask me what's the the most interesting thing I've ever I, that's, seen I or round experienced. That out by, what's well for me? I was going to say what's the weirdest thing? I think I have the the one that's the one that raises the hair on your arms the fastest. But you tell me what, which one were you thinking of? Which story were you thinking of? You know, I don't know if it's weird as much as how beautiful it was. So I was in a study group doing a practice reading with a woman I'd never met, and. I was doing a mediumistic reading, so I was connecting to the other side. And this energy of this young boy came through, and it was the first time a child has ever come through. And it brings tears to my eyes because when a child comes through, it's you're like, oh no, I must be, I must be wrong. This can't be happening, you know. Mm -hmm. But it was a boy, it was her son that had passed. Um, but the way he the way he presented himself to me is he showed me these running legs and he was on a skateboard and he showed me he was in this like landscape where there were like mountains and water and hills and snow caps and sky. And he was skateboarding and running and jumping. And I thought it's so fascinating, but he showed me these little white socks. He was wearing little white ankle socks. So as I described what I was seeing to this woman, she got tears in her eyes too. And she said, that was my son. He was a paraplegic. Hmm. And um, oh I didn't, he had white shoes and white socks. And she said, the reason he's showing that to you is because, because he didn't really, he didn't walk around. You know, I just would buy him basic white shoes and white socks. Oh, and so God. that's what he had every year of his life. And what he was showing her in spirit is that he is now free and he's using his little legs and he's skateboarding and he's running and he's physical and adventurous. And she was just blown away. She was she was so grateful for the message because he'd never come through to anyone before. And um, just for her to experience that loving connection. And that blew my mind. It wow. just blew it. Yeah. So to wow. be able to offer that kind of that healing, to know that in his human life, mm -hmm. he didn't get to do all those things, but that in spirit, he was free from that physical body. Right. Was an incredible. Um, I just felt so grateful to be yeah. able to deliver that. I can only imagine. And he's using his shoes. That's so crazy. It's just so touching. Yeah. He's using his shoes. Hmm. Yeah, you can't hit me and the kids. No, no, <laughs> no. Um, and and that's the thing is, um, in mediumship, I have animals come through. I've had just the animals come through and give the most beautiful messages because often people are crushed when they lose their animals. And um, I've had right. so many dogs come through that it brings so much. It, the thing is, it brings so much healing because humans are so afraid that the people they love that died are not okay. And so what I get to say to them, they're more than okay. And by the way, they're with you and they're, they've got mm -hmm. keeping an eye on you and they want you to know this, you know, they want you to know, they remember that you held their hand in their last breath. Yeah. I've had so many people come through to let the person know that, yes, I know you were standing there, even though you didn't think I was conscious. I remember you squeezing my hand. I remember you telling me you loved me. And then they often show me what happened when they go to the other side and like what it mm -hmm. felt like and what it looked like. So um, it's, it is a magical space. Um, and I just highly recommend people experiencing if it's experiencing it, especially if they've lost someone, yeah. Yeah. but you were going to share a story. What's that? You were going to share your favorite story. Well, mine is not as nearly as touching, but it's, it's one that people love. And it's one I love telling, um, I'll leave names out obviously just for privacy sake. But um, so we had a, a friend of ours, we had some friends over and this is sort of at the beginning of the whole thing for you, as far as becoming a medium. And, and it was kind of a point of interest. Now our friends are just like, yeah, yeah. My friend who talks to dead people. Um, but uh, this woman said, do me, do me. And you were sort of like, are you sure? And you're like, 
she's like, yeah, no, do me. And we knew this person. I'd known her for a number of years, but we didn't really know her family history at any length. And mm -hmm. um, you said, okay, uh, so there's this woman here and she's in her 60s. I think she's, she's 62. I think she died when she was 62. She has a black bob. Her hair is cut in a black bob. And you could sort of see the, the, our friend's energy sort of shift. And you were, you were just kind of talking and saying, and then you turned to her and you said, oh, I'm so sorry. And the woman kind of gave you the green light to keep talking and to say, because you didn't want to necessarily reveal without permission. And you said this, the person is, she's like, I think it's your mom's sister. And she's telling me that she had been depressed her whole life. And then you went, you kind of took a breath and you're like, I'm, I'm so sorry. And you could see the woman's eyes started to fill up a little bit. And she said, she said she shot herself and the woman shook her head. Yeah, she did. And then weirdly, you kind of started to giggle a little bit. Like it was, it was sort of off brand for the moment that you giggled and you were sort of like, I'm sorry. You're like, I, she's showing me herself in the casket the day you were buried on her funeral. You, it's you and your mom and another family member and you're in the room and you're arguing over what dress to put her in. And she's laughing because <laughs> you're arguing for the paisley dress that she loved and everyone else hated. And your mom and this other family member are arguing for this other dress that you knew that she, that the woman actually hated. And so she's laughing because you ended up burying her in the green paisley dress and the woman's mouth just about hit our friend's mouth just about hit the floor in our living room. And she's like, no one, I've never told anyone other than the three that she was dumbfounded. Yeah. And it's just sort of story after story after story of you getting these messages from those who have passed to kind of confirm that like, yeah, um, it's me. And there's no way this person that I'm is my, that you're using as a medium could possibly know any of the stuff that, that no way, uh, that I'm telling her. So, yeah. Right. There's, yeah. there's no way. Um, I've had, I had someone come to a reading cause she was a friend of a friend whose friend had passed. So I would have had no, she had no connection. So if you're wondering, you know, am I psychically getting this information? This guy came through who had died and the woman I was reading never met him, but it was a mutual friend of theirs that they had in common. And he told me how to plan his funeral. He told me oh what he God. wanted and he was a surfer. So he said what color surfboard he wanted. That was his. He told me he wanted his, um, he wanted a Hawaiian surf paddle out. He wanted his girlfriend to wear a crown of flowers. He told me details wow. about his friendship with this guy. Um, and the woman I was reading was a woman and she just took notes and passed it on. And then she sent me a video. They planned the funeral and it was a beautiful funeral. Um, or maybe a celebration of life is more appropriate. Um, but what I, I did want to go back you, to, you, to you know, the whole suicide thing. Yeah, I really did. It was beautiful. Yeah. Um, but cause there's a delay. I wanted to go back to the suicide thing because there are, yeah. I've had many people come through who have killed, taken their own lives and mm -hmm. they always come through and say that they're okay. They're free. I think we have a lot of judgment about suicide and people taking their own life. I think we have a lot of ideas of what we presume to know or what we presume might've been right for mm -hmm. that person. But, mm -hmm. you know, I'm, I I've talked openly about having um, a time where I felt suicidal and, you know, hearing what these people have to say who have done this, it's really, I just want to pass on the message that we can't judge or assume that we know what someone's suffering is like. You know, we, we can never know how bad someone's suffering. And if someone is at the point of doing something to exit this life, they have to be really suffering to something that we That's couldn't right. even put our finger on. Like we couldn't even own. So, and I also want to share that if you who is listening has had someone that you've lost that has taken their own life, um, I've, they always have come through and said that they're okay and they're with you and they, they are in a loving space and they're whole, they're free. So I just think that's important because I think that can bring up a lot of questions. And is the message typically that their suffering is over and that they don't suffer yeah. anymore? Mm. You know, they're suffering because they're in a, in this human body and this human life with whatever trauma or wounds they have. And now mm -hmm. in the other side, you know, they've shed this human body. They're no longer living this human life. You know, they're free. So mm -hmm. they're an energetic being. Um, and mm -hmm. 
which brings up, and I want to say that I don't know anything for sure. You know, I can only say what I've experienced. So I'm not going to come at you saying, I know for sure what happens on the other side. I can only tell you what people have told me. But what I also have come to understand is that I can connect soul to soul to someone who has passed. And that soul energy is there, but it could also have been reincarnated into another life. They could be living another life, but I can still connect to their soul energy. If that doesn't scramble your brains, I don't know what will. <laughs> right. So with that, I think we should probably wrap up because I know if I, I, I could dig in and, and even though I live with you and we could talk about this anytime, I'd still love talking with you about it. It's a, a rich topic and, and there's always so many amazing, interesting, and obviously heart wrenching, uh, touching stories. So again, when does your yeah. next class start in case people are interested? Oh, if, if you're interested, you can find me at ashleytorrent.com or on Instagram at ashleytorrent29. And my class starts March 6th or March 6th. Ninth, I have two class offerings at different times, different days, and it's a six week class. It's limited to six people. And um, yeah, so if you're interested, definitely reach out. I'm open to, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out and ask. They can DM you on Instagram as well. Oh yeah, absolutely. And you could contact me through my website. Um, I'm open. I'd love to answer questions about this. And if you want a reading, no. don't hesitate to reach out. So well, thank you. The, Thanks uh, for, um, go ahead. Yeah. Thank you. Sorry, delay. Thanks for bringing this to, um, light. Thanks for having this conversation with me because I thought it was important. Yeah, no, I thought it would be interesting. It'd be fun. And it, and it was. So for us and the single on purpose podcast, this is Blair Torrent, Ashley Torrent. We are the practice of love podcast. Thanks for joining us. And again, if you are interested in learning your own intuitive language or even becoming a medium or just digging in to find out what 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 uh, uh, treasures and gifts are there for you in the spiritual realm, don't hesitate to reach out to Ash because I'll tell you what, it's pretty cool shit. All right. Thanks so much. Thank you. I hope that episode was helpful. Hey, listen, if you want to share your singlehood journey, if you've gone somewhere, come back. If you have revelations and wisdom, please share your story. It's going to help other people. Nothing makes us feel more connected than hearing other people's stories. So just send me the audio of your story and you could just record it directly from your phone and email it to theangrytherapist at gmail.com. Also, if you want our Single on Purpose newsletter, go to singleonpurpose.life that's singleonpurpose.life you will get tools and articles and other people's stories and also uh, zoom links to private gathers so if you want to join our community go to singleonpurpose.life thank you for listening be well we hope you tell a friend hey before you go i want to invite you to the single on purpose private community online it's off of social media, no ads, no algorithms. We got forums, we got live groups, we got webinars, and we have social hangs. We also have offline in-person hangs happening soon. So check us out. Go to singleonpurpose.life. That's singleonpurpose.life, and I will see you inside.